A few weeks ago, I received an email that I would like to share with you. This is a true story that happened with a caller to Islam from Egypt called Amru Khalid. He said, three days ago, I received an email from a young lady from Australia. And the email reads as follows. And I quote, I am a young Lebanese lady that has a Muslim father and a Christian mother. For the first 10 years of my life, I lived in Lebanon. Then we migrated to Australia, which brought an end to my relationship, to my connection with the Middle East. I am currently 22 years of age. And after migrating to Australia, my association with my religion also ended completely. The only thing I know is that I am a Muslim. That's it. I don't know what the Quran looks like. I don't know how to pray. And the religion plays no significance in my life. My mother and father separated. Each one remarrying another person. I entered university. My mother and father left Australia, leaving me behind alone with no family, no brothers and sisters. I know nothing about my ancestry in Lebanon. I lived alone and I had to work to spend on myself. I attended university in the morning and worked at a bar in the evening. I have a boyfriend and have not left out any haram except having done it without any shame. I am fully westernized. I know a little bit of Arabic. And because I am extremely beautiful, I joined the beauty competition in New Zealand and won in this competition. I am planning to join a bigger competition in New Zealand and I am currently modeling for magazines. During this time, I used to visit a Lebanese family residing in Australia. And I saw a Ramadan episode on television talking about modesty. The episode had its web address displayed. I went through a nervous breakdown. It was as though this episode was addressing me directly. I am sending you this email to ask, is it possible for Allah to accept me? In other words, forgive me. And this is where Sarah's email ends. SubhanAllah, no matter how long a person's iman is, the soul of a person longs for its creator just as the stomach hungers for food, so too does the soul long for Allah. This caller to Islam wrote back advising her about the conditions of repentance and that Allah will of course forgive her if she repents. Two days later, she contacts Amru Khalid and she says, I have repented to Allah and I have left my boyfriend and promised never to see him again. After another two days, she contacts him and she says, I want to learn how to pray. Then another two days pass and she says, I would like some Quranic audio tapes. So he sends her some tapes via DHL Courier. A week goes by and he doesn't hear from her until she contacts him and informs him that she has retracted her beauty title of that particular city. Then came the surprise. She contacted him saying, I have put on the hijab. However, the story does not end here. Two days after putting on the hijab, she experiences sharp pain. So she goes to the doctor who diagnoses her with brain cancer and that her days are limited. She enters the hospital to be operated on. The success rate of this operation, as informed by the doctors in Australia, is 20%. This is what the doctor said. As for Sarah, listen to what she had to say. She said, I am pleased to meet Allah. I am happy that I repented prior to finding out about my illness. I don't know whether my mother and father will know about my situation. If I live, I will support your website, for this website is my window to Islam. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to him is our return. May Allah have mercy on Sarah who died at the age of 22. They buried her with the Muslims in New Zealand. Prior to her death, 
she sent a short letter to Amru Khalid saying, I lived far away from my Lord for 22 years, but I repented and turned back to Allah three weeks ago. I don't know many Muslims besides you and this internet forum. I urge you to make dua for me that Allah has mercy on me and, and to forgive me. Make dua to Allah to guide my mother, for she does not know anything about me. Signed, Sarah. Every soul shall taste death. May Allah guide the Muslims, especially those living in the West, those who have adopted the evil ways of the disbelievers. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this was the praiseworthy end of a young lady. What about the famous story of an old lady and how she died? She was in her salat. And when she was in the salat, she found that she did not have the strength to move. She requested from her son to rush her to the hospital. She was examined by the doctors, but the doctors were of no benefit because Allah had decreed something else. She said to her son, take me back home. When they arrived, she asked her son to help her perform the wudu and for him to return her to the position she was in before she was taken to the hospital. What position was she in? She was in the most noblest of positions in Salat. She was in sujood. She was in prostration to Allah, the Most High. Whilst she was in prostration, she farewelled her son and died with her body in the sujood position. She remained in sujood, so they washed her whilst she was in sujood. They wrapped the kafan, they wrapped the shroud around her whilst she was in sujood. They prayed the janazah prayer, the funeral prayer whilst she was in sujood. They carried her to the grave whilst she was in sujood. They buried her whilst she was in sujood. And on the day of judgment, she will be resurrected in sujood. Allahu Akbar. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high to decree for us such good endings. As for the third cause that leads to an evil end is becoming accustomed to a sinful deed. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he informs us that a believer is one that views a sinful action like a mountain hovering above his head about to drop on him. The hypocrite on the other hand sees a sin like a fly about to land on his nose and deters it away by moving his hand right and left. If a person becomes accustomed to a sinful action, it may dominate his heart and mind. Then when it comes to uttering the shahada whilst dying, the evil deed dominates his mind and he finds it difficult to utter the shahada.